King Power Stadium is ready for the fixture that's had its fair share of memorable moments. It's on now to Jaden Sancho, who's onside and scored. Well, that's such a simple goal. Madison does hit it. Good save, David De Gea. They've got plenty of men in the centre. Ronaldo's one of them. Eric Ten Hag's team are starting to find the winning habit. Leicester City nil, Manchester United won. Oh, difficult times for Brendan Rodgers, but good times at the moment for Manchester United. And actually, we're still talking about a Manchester United side that are finding their feet, finding their confidence under this new manager. And one of those players is Jadon Sancho. Three goals last season, two already this season. What did you all think of him this evening? I think there's a, a million miles more to come. I think there's so much talent in Jaden. I think it's been difficult for him because he came into a team that was really struggling. You know, you come into a new team, you want to come in, the team settled. There are a lot of issues. Uh, I think they brought him in to play off the right-hand side because they had Rashford and Martial for left. Jaden looks better off the left-hand side. You know, I think all of them do. Martial, Rashford all look better off the left-hand side. But there's a, there's a fantastic player in there. There really is. I think he's got so much. I think, in a way, at Dortmund, he had Hakimi as a right-back mm -hmm. who, who took the width and he came inside. And then he had Haaland to link with. So that whole right-hand channel was, was world-class. And I think with the personnel that United had, it didn't really suit maybe the way that he wanted to play. Rio and I were talking about it. Jaden wants to come in and link, play little one-twos and play decisive passes. So I think Jaden's been really good, but there's, there's so much more to come from Jaden. I, I think with Jaden, the team has to function for him to be able to perform. There's some players who, no matter what happens, they can go and, and do something in the game that changes the game. I think Jaden needs other areas to be functioning really well. He needs uh, Malassia to be flying up on, on the side of him. Like I said, Hakimi was doing that at Dortmund. But he needs Malassia to be flying up, getting outside him, creating that decoy and then having someone to bounce the ball off inside, whether it's a midfielder, a Bruno or a striker, and then moving because he's a, he's a great footballer, he's a thinker mm -hmm. and he's got a great way to pass. He needs runners and movement around him to be able to affect the game. And I think an area that, that he's improving in the last few couple of games is actually getting in and around the box to score goals. Yeah, that's a good and point. I think if he, if he keeps adding that to his game, then he's going to be a definite threat and he's going to always be in the mind, manager's mind in terms of, of scoring goals. Here, he's doing the other side of the game. He's pressing. Manager demands that, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. And then it's about staying, staying in and around it when the ball comes up to the, the, the sharp end of the pitch. And see, see here, it's a great first touch away from the goalkeeper, takes him out of the game completely and it's a fantastic finish. I think the biggest, I know we're talking about Jay and Sanjo, but I think the biggest thing in this side now and scores he talked about about midfield players taking the ball in the half turn this is the goal you know the full back height of the pad look at Fernandez's position just look he knows he wants to play forward they're trying to communicate Samari saying to Johnny Evans I agree with Rio Samari's got to go and do the um, go out wide Johnny Evans has got to drop back the first touch is fantastic the thing about that goal was the way they moved the ball quick you mm. know uh, you know defenders went be allowed to set but going back to the team itself Varane and Martinez, mm. they've not got beat. They've got a partnership. We've seen United over the last few years, Maguire and Bay, Bay Lindelof. So many different partnerships. Yeah. These two, for me, unbeaten. They've won every game, I think, since those two have played together. And midfield players who get the ball in the afternoon, controlling games. I think that's the biggest thing. And what United have to do going forward, I think they've had, the, in the last 10 years, the biggest net spend in the Premier mm. League. And look where they are. The recruitment has to be right. And... It would take time, but it's, they've had 10 years and it's not, mm. the recruitment has not been good enough. But they, what they're doing now is that the results are enabling them to start creating a, a culture and an environment. And we saw the, the, the pictures, we saw it live up here, the reaction to a tackle, yeah, yeah, yeah. a yeah. blocking of a cross from Dalot. And you see it in there going, they're going crazy. It's just, it's only blocked the cross. But that's creating something. And you can mm. see something there. Listen, they've still got a lot, of, lot of long way to go. But the back four, they seem to togetherness. And I, listen, any good team that I played in, it was almost like we're, us, we're our own unit. We keep clean sheets. They go and do what they're doing, the midfielders and forward. But us together, yeah. we keep this, our house in check. And it seems like they're starting to build something there between them. And that is vitally important for any good team. Even just the way that he stood and watched the players go over to the away fans. Remember, it wasn't too long ago that players were walking off disgruntled, grumpy, not going to the away fans. Question marks over that. It, it, it might not be sexy, but it, 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 stability is important in football at times. And that's what Manchester United need more than anything. Yeah, well, I think he stripped it back to basics. Yeah. I thought the Brighton game, the Brentford game, he, he saw enough. 
and you need effort, you need intensity. We talk too much about formations and shape and tactics. You can't play football at this level without intensity and effort. All the top teams, Liverpool, City, they play with intensity and effort. United had none against Brighton and Brentford. It was, it was unbelievable to watch. And speaking to some of the staff, you know, they looked at the, the clips and said, you know, forget the tactics. You, you got to run and you got to tackle. And they did that from the first minute against Liverpool. And I think today, today wasn't great. There's so much more on this United side. They'll play way better football. But the organised, the fancy sound, Sab makes a good point about the back four. I think, look, I think they're in a good spot. But there's, there's a lot more to come from the group. I think Eriton Hag said it before the game. There's a process. There's a process now to get into being a, a consistent team that is going to be challenging for top four first and foremost and then beyond that. And they, they've got to follow that. And listen, to add to what they've already got at the moment, they've got Casemiro still to come in. I think the last two performances, the words you could use it is efficient. Mm. Not spectacular, but efficient in the way they played. You know, as Real said, I think they'd lost those games last year. Mm. Um, so, again, recruitment. And Ronaldo, when he come on. You know, mm. he hasn't sulked. He's come on, he's made an impact. You know, Nida scored a fantastic overhead kick. Um, but you look at the strength and depth they have now as well. Mm. So, you know, Champions League a qualification this year. You know, got a chance, Europa League. Um, you know, you, you, you're Champions League, I'm Europa League. Um, you know, um, so, you know, let me do that competition. <laughs> Fine. You can have United for a season and we'll... we'll you wear Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> and I got sacked. Uh, right, let's, um, let's hear from Brendan Rodgers. Brendan is, <laughs> Brendan's talking to Dead Series. Brendan, you were still in the contest right mm. to the end, but <clears throat> nothing to show for it, which must be... Frustrating for you? Yeah, very. Um, we're disappointed with the goal. The goal is uh, is too open, obviously from the from the ball back, and then it gets cleared. We you have to close. You have to close the game up, and uh, that's a little bit of naivety uh, and uh, what within the, the the squad at that moment. Um, but I've got to say that the players kept going. They gave absolutely everything. You know, the, the intensity was there. They kept fighting. We, we, we lack that bit of uh, we lack that bit of craft and a bit of quality in the final third. Obviously, James Madison gives us that, um, but uh, but you needed more. You needed more than that. So uh, so yeah. But like I said, the attitude of the players they they give absolutely everything. The spirits there, but um, but yeah, it wasn't enough. We could see how upset you were. You went straight to the monitor after the goal was scored and just shaking a head. You could see the disappointment because a big space had opened up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you? you You've got to be able to play in that moment as well. You know, I think when it comes back, you know, Wardy's done great for us since he's come in. And uh, but when the ball goes back to the keeper, you need those angles from the centre half, so you need uh, your centre midfield player that can come in and take the ball. And but that aside, Wardy's made the decision to kick, and once he kicks it, you've got to close the game up. You know, if you're, you just got to be tight as a four, and then and then work your way into the game. Didn't quite click tonight. But the players, it's under, understandable that they're a bit vulnerable after this mm. run of events. And yeah. They just need something to go for them to lift the spirits a little bit. Yeah, that's it. And, and I've, I feel for them because we, they, they've given absolutely everything. You know, they've, uh, with all the greatest respect, we haven't had the help in the, in, uh, in the market that this team needed. Uh, so it's just going to be the case of, you know, pushing on, I think, when the window closes this evening. It'll, uh, it gives us now that, that, common theme now as a team we've got, we've got to get the win yeah. uh, and uh, like I said but as, if we can show that spirit and that attitude then uh, I'm pretty sure it'll come quickly everyone focuses on the one thing there's none of this speculation none of the chit chat yeah that's right and it has it's been a huge distraction and uh, like I've said before it destabilises a group and a mentality when there's so much going on so um, but this, the, the, these are you know, a good bunch of guys who once you know they get that win, the confidence will grow and uh, and they'll be fine. It's a big test for you as well of your metal and your determination because it's a complicated financial situation here, and you're playing against a side that's spent two hundred and twenty million pounds in the transfer window. That's right. I, modern football, there's no empathy for for that situation, and uh, yeah, it's listen, it's it is what it is. We we want to be competitive. And uh, I think we were really competitive tonight, but uh, we just weren't good enough to take something from the game. Thank you, Brendan. Cheers, Des. Thank you. Well, look, Brendan Rodgers lays it on the line. His words, we didn't get the help this team needed. How concerned are you about Leicester and 
their position in this, in this league. You know, I said before the game when we were speaking to Brendan that you know his, the, the way he makes players better, you can see every detail he looks at. You know, with him and his coach inside, you know, it's probably going to be a huge test of his managerial career. You know, um, could they go down? Yeah, they could. I think they could. One point from from five games. Uh, you know, but I just think. The owners don't press the panic button because they've got a fantastic manager. He's won the FA Cup not so long ago. They finished fifth on two occasions. Yeah. He's got this. He's you know he's not changed, but he's got to try and make the players better who he's made better. If you if you understand what I mean, and that's going to be mm. difficult to lift them because those players will be thinking now it's the same group again. You know, listen, they've got an unbelievable, the best training ground in the country, no yeah. doubt about that. You know, it's a fantastic fan base. But they could go down. But as long as Brendan Rodgers stays here, I don't believe they will. Unity, right, has been the key at Leicester for the last few seasons. And actually, unity is quite easy when you're winning FA Cups and you're winning Premier Leagues and you're finishing in the top half. This is now the test, not just of Brendan and his players, but the test of this football club. The test of the owners, the test of the fans. Yeah, it is. And I think a key part of that as well is, is keeping people happy. We spoke about Madison before. He'd been courted by clubs. Mm. Newcastle were reported in the papers. Tielemans had been courted by different cl- clubs. It's about actually kind of reigniting their fire as well for this football club. It's very difficult, but they have to take some responsibility with that with the players, but also the management, management staff, they have to go in there and galvanise this squad because it's, it's been difficult. And to watch other teams go on recruit and bring players in and spend large amounts of money that we just heard there, the, the big sums of money that's been spread throughout the league this year, it's record record breaking season in that sense, but your club hasn't done anything. You're sitting there thinking, Jesus, it's going to be a difficult, difficult year. So it's getting that mindset to be changed from negative to positive, which is going to be the big ask. Okay. Well, one of those clubs who have spent and spent big is Manchester United. They've backed their new manager. The window closes this evening, and he now has more of his squad to deal with for the next few months to see if he can take them back to where he and they feel they belong. Let's hear from Eric Ten Hag. Developing a nice habit of, of winning. <laughs> third game on the trot what did you make of the performance I think again a step forward so we are happy with that and uh, again good team spirit again 11 players on the pitch who fight for each other and good compact good press and I think a lovely goal but um, also room for improvement still and but that's normal start of the season very classy goal Dallow Fernandez, Rashford Sancho's beautiful move yeah um, we can be that dangerous uh, in the transition moments. We know that, and um, and as especially second half, uh, um, also first half, there were many spaces and we didn't even explore them that well. If we make one or the other better decision, uh, we should have scored the first, second goal. Yeah, was that a concern in the first half? Because you did have a lot of the ball and you had chances, but you didn't quite. We weren't ruthless enough, maybe. We have to be more. Uh, so what I said, there's yeah, room yeah. for improvement and we will work on that. And Jaden Sancho, you can see his confidence is, is, is on the up after the goal from Liverpool and tonight. Yes, but he had also a really good pre-season and he sees now we invest a lot in pre-season and uh, now during the season and you see then he can make the difference. Uh, he's a great player, but, uh, but also the whole team because I think it's a really team goal once again. And also... Winning away from home, which is something that Manchester United haven't been doing recently, that shows the character and a bit of fight in this side that you're trying to, to build up. Of course, and I'm, I'm happy with the clean sheet. And you see, uh, when we uh, when there are 11 on the pitch uh, we, uh, who defend together and attack together, and when you have that in, uh, the energy, and then you see what you can achieve. And the options that you have, Casemiro coming on, Ronaldo coming on, that's quality through the, through the whole squad now. Yeah, but I think we, we need that. And um, I think um, we need a good squad. You need numbers. We have a lot of games to cover. And so we're happy you see um, the ones Casimiro, uh, Ronnie gets fitter and fitter. So we will have more contribution uh, given to the, to the team. And yeah, and so we need not only a team, we need a squad. And you've got Anthony on board now. Is he going to be part of the squad for, for Sunday? Yes, we have to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he did today his first training, individual. Then we have two team sessions, and then we will see for Sunday. Just for the last time, I mean, we've got 
45 minutes left. Is the transfer window closed for Manchester United? <laughs> when there's a really good opportunity, we have to strike. <laughs> but I think uh, the building is closed for uh, for now. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, sir. Okay. Mm. okay. Christian, third successive win. That's, that looks, that's a side that's turning the corner, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think from uh, from the start we had, obviously, we had a lot of things we needed to change. And, uh, yeah, we've done that by winning. It hasn't been uh, beautiful for 90 minutes, but we have three wins. Yeah, and you have to show a bit of steel away from away from home. Yeah, no, I think we are at the moment we're <laughs> we're winning one 0 We keep it tight, uh, but yeah, no, obviously we, we want to do better. But I think this is a good start and it's a it's a good build. We can uh, we can take something from this, and obviously the three points is the most important. The one goal, a lovely goal, Jaden. Lovely team goal. Yeah, it was a great team goal. Um, you know, I'm just happy that you know I got the goal for the team and I got the three points. Yeah, you you look confident now. Of course, the goal against Liverpool helped as well. Yeah, you know, um, obviously. Doing pre-season with the team, you know, my first pre-season, obviously last year I missed pre-season, so, you know, I got, I got to know the players a lot more, and then we worked on a few stuff, and yeah, I'm getting more comfortable. Yeah, and in terms of, the, of this side, knitting together, but uh, do, in the first half you pretty much dominated, do, do you think you should have killed the game off maybe? Yeah, I think so, I think it's a, similar to Southampton, I mean, we, we did very well until we scored, and then we, uh, we have to keep momentum, we have to kill the game earlier, obviously, otherwise it's going to be a tight game until, uh, until the end, like today. Table's looking a little bit better, Jaden. You're up into fifth now. Yeah, um, you know, we hoped um, to start the season with, with two wins, but obviously, you know, that woke us up and, you know, happy that we got the third win today. Yeah, making progress. A big game at the weekend now, another one, Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, from now on, they just keep coming every uh, Thursday, Sunday from <laughs> now until uh, after the World Cup. So, I mean, yeah, we are, we're looking good. I mean, we're getting the points and we're getting the, the base of what we need to do. But obviously, it's going to be a, a tight schedule, but a lot of fun games in between. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, indeed, an important game for them coming up on Sunday. A real proper test up against the current leaders in the Premier League, Arsenal. Robbie, let's talk about Leicester then this evening. Where do we begin? They weren't a threat at all, were they, going forward? That would be the worry for Brendan Rodgers. Um, if you look at the side, you know, Johnny Evans, was he 34 now? Mm. You know, at the, the back, you know, the, the spine of the team. And Jamie Bard is 35 yeah. up top. Um, it's a huge worry. Madison, one free kick, you know, but they haven't threatened, threatened David De Gea at all. Justin with a chance at the end. But I just don't think they got to grip. They didn't affect the games. Individuals didn't win any battles on the pitch. Mm. But what, what is happening here then? This is a team that finished eighth in the Premier League last season. This is a team that have been in the top half of the last five Premier League seasons. This is the same team from last season. You know, Fofana was injured a lot of last season. But, like, but Jake, I think it goes back to the point we, we've heard a lot of managers and a lot of us as players, you talk about transfer windows and you think new players coming in gives you that impetus, gives you that little bit of kind of, it generates a feeling and change and where, oh, I've got to prove myself and show yeah. that player and that extra competition comes in again. They haven't got that here. They're sitting on the same amount of same players, really. They understand that the, the dynamics of the football club have changed. The, 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 the purse strings have been pulled. So that, that there's automatically going to be a little bit of negativity that creeps in. But again, it's up to Brendan and his staff to kind of change that now. And I think he was right in what he says. I think it's a big moment now. The window's shut. Yeah. Expectation levels, there's none of them now. We've got what we've got. We've got to work with it now. And I think that they've got to change that mindset now once this window's closed tonight. I was doing a bit of maths during the game, which is always dangerous for me. Um, but the squad are not old. The average age tonight of the starting eleven was 26. Interestingly, though, on average, those players have been here almost five years each. So this is not a new squad by any stretch. Is that, is that a, a factor, that for five years they've been at the same club? Oh, possibly, but I just think that, you know, if you're looking at the bench, how many players who started the game tonight would think they're going to play every single week? And that's what Rio's going to the point where any change room, we've all been in chain rooms, some better than others. I was probably the worst one. <laughs> um, but again, even players when... No one disagreed yeah, with that. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when, you know, even in any dressing room, if a player comes in, you're thinking, right, so Jewsby Hall mm. has worked hard to get into the team. Who's going to... Now, Jewsby Hall, we're thinking, might be thinking that I'm going to play with Wiki. Who's pushing Jewsby Hall? Who's pushing the next player? So I'm not saying that against Jewsby Hall because he's, he deserved to be in the team, doesn't he? And he's been fantastic. I thought he was Leicester's best player tonight. But who's pushing the players in the side? So Vardy, does Vardy think, well, I'm going to play every week? You know, Madison, when he's fit, am I going to play every week? So that's why I think Brendan Rodgers needs 
needed to add players in, in, the, in the I think the track. word that best explains it is, is there's a bit of a stoutness here. Yeah. It's stout. Yeah, it's it flat. Feels, yeah. It feels flat. It feels Crowd stout. Flat. The crowd as well, they feel it. And you need the atmosphere. They need to help generate the atmosphere, but the players need to kind of bring that as well. And there wasn't enough to down the pitch that excited this crowd until probably like the last two or three minutes. And that, that just isn't good enough. Yeah. And obviously you can't be here because you're watching this at home, but actually in the programme notes, the chairman makes the point that after a few years of spending, they are now pulling in the purse strings. They have to make sure that they deal with the fair play situation, financial fair play. And for that reason, Leicester, as you've seen, have not gone heavy this, this year. In fact, Wesley Fofana leaving for 70 million is the big bit of business at this football club. And it leaves them at the bottom of the Premier League table after these midweek matches. We've had some cracking games, actually, the last couple of nights, haven't we? Uh, a brilliant result for Southampton against Chelsea. They were delighted with that on Tuesday. And then we saw a stunning hat-trick from Erling Haaland, back-to-back Premier League hat-tricks for him, and a very late, late show from Liverpool against Newcastle United. This one rounds off, though, what's happened to be, or where it should be even. For the quality of players that are on that football pitch from both sides, really, I thought it was a really poor game. And I don't often say that, Richard, because when you've played the game that we have, it's, it's difficult to have levels all the time. But that was poor. That's, we've seen 50 games now. Five each, yeah? 50 mm-hmm. games. We've seen 50, 50 football matches in the Premier League. That's one of the poorest I've seen this season. Very little quality. Hardly anything in the top third when you want to see some action I think David De Gea made one save in the second half from a free kick yeah. from Madison, that's it so it was a game littered with ordinary football sadly, but United did what United need to do right now, build confidence get results, get points That they wake up tomorrow morning feeling it's a different league now, we're up in the top half for fifth, you know we've got nine points, who's next? Instead of oh I can't, I'm not looking forward to next week and that's what they've done. But Jason's right. Without, without. Any, I, I mean, I don't know. Let me ask you, Jason. I, I was looking there tonight deliberately to see. All right, Ten Hag's been in for pre-season. Mm-hmm. Took them away to America. Worked on them. Same players, right? Not Australia. They went Australia. Australia was it? Australia. Yeah. So they worked on them. Um, he got his ideas across, I'm sure. But I, I'm watching them tonight, and I'm watching, and, and I'm thinking, well, what are those ideas? Yeah. I don't see a, a pattern of play. I don't see a theory in there where well, I, I can't look at them and think, right, I know what they're trying to do there. They kind of half and half. They get they sometimes press and sometimes don't. Mm. And then when they go one up, they drop off the play and defend deep like they did second half or most of it and look to counter. I, I'm not quite sure what, what he's trying to do overall. I'm sure he's got a plan, but I don't know what it is. Well, <laughs> he's going to stick to what he knows, isn't it? Which is his mm. Ajax way, which is, you know, a midfielder that drops into the back four, picks it up, will then drive, press. He likes to press. Mm. But then again, it comes back to the question, have you got the players? Yeah. Or has he had long enough? You know, I'd like to think, you know, with what he's trying to do, you want to see a bit more from Rashford because he's got the energy in the legs. He's young. You want to see him pressing. But like you say, they don't do it in unison, do they? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like they haven't got it yet. Yes. It's, it's not clicked, has no. it? No. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether Martial getting him back in the team and then what is it? Then you, Where'd you put Rashford? That wouldn't excite me, would it, you? No, not me. Waiting to find. Well, they've got, they've, they've, got, they've, got, they've, they've got Anthony to bring in, isn't that? He, he'll, he'll probably give them a lift. Well, he how, knows his way as well. How much late for him, he, hasn't he? Yeah, he does know his way. That's that's an absolute certainty. He knows his way. And I, and I think there's there's obviously huge work to be done at Manchester United. You know, three wins is great, but don't let anybody kid you that they're back. They're oh, miles no, no. away from being back mm. where they need to be. Miles away, but it's it, progress. It,